Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Come along with us. Um, on today's agenda, first thing, we were gonna clean out the garden, but it has been raining all morning and it's still real dreary. Uh, we gotta get these cows moved. new to the channel we practice rotational grazing to a sense we have about four paddocks that we move the cows and the horses throughout and uh, as you can tell they've done a number on this pasture right here which is actually what Andy wanted them to do we left them in here a little longer than we should have but Andy's gonna re-sow all this especially up on that bank over there so we wanted them to eat it down pretty good and uh, we're gonna mosey them through this little lane we've made here Across the driveway over to the other pasture. Come on. Ooh, cows. Where's the other one? This, she's coming. You know how she is. Come on. You're okay. Come on, baby. Come on, Quasi. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, Quaz. He does not like that wire. Come on, baby. He shot. Don't shut the gate back. Come on. Good boy. Come on, baby boo. Uh. Come on, girl. Come on, baby. There you go. My girl's getting a little round. Y'all ready for that greener grass, ain't you? They've done this a few times, if you can't tell. It usually works pretty good. They kind of know what's going on. Sometimes they get a little stubborn, but for the most part, it works good. And so now what the plan is, we've got to get them to the back side of this pasture. So the last, it's the place that's had the longest amount of rest. Andy's got the draw hook to the back of the four wheeler. I mean, it works pretty good, guys. They're happy to be back. <laughs> they always get excited. Come on. Come on. Candy. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. Come on. Not that way. So now, as you can see here, there's our chickens. So they're gonna have this area here for several days. What's that, Quaz? You think Levy's gonna stay in here? He, he's like, I don't know where I'm at. He's never been down here. I know. I guess we'll see. 
He knows how to get home. He's been out before. He'll be knocking on the back door here in about 30 minutes. Yeah, let me tell y'all a funny story about Lovey. While I got you on here, Lovey the goat. He's a bottle fed goat, but he's about three years old, something like that. Anyways, when he was a baby, he could get out of the fence and he would come knock on the back door when he was ready for his bottle. So he would like wake me and Andy up at five or six o'clock in the morning when he was hungry and come uh, wanting his bottle like a baby, you know. So now, if he ever gets out, which has happened occasionally, uh, that's where he comes. He comes to the back door and comes and knocks on the back door. So we're actually gonna try to leave him in here with them if he'll stay, cause I mean, he likes the cows and horses, whether they like him, I'm unsure. But see, I mean, they're not bothered by each other. Well, them cows is happy to get back over here on some good grass. Oh yeah. So guys, I just got the uh, bush hog here hooked up to the tractor. I've got a little bush hog job I got to do here at the beginning of the week. But um, I just happened to think about it. I'm going to go down here and check the temperature in the compost that we've been making from our cow manure. Let's see what it is. I was just like, while I'm down here, Let's look at it and see, because I stirred it up, if you can tell, I stirred it all up the other day, and uh, there was quite a bit of steam rolling out of it. So let's see if it's even. It's climbing. So it's doing something. It amazes me that something like that can heat up and create heat just in amongst itself. I don't know why, but I just think that's pretty cool. But it looks like, so it's not super hot. Looks like it's gonna to top out around 115. So that's fine. Um, we don't use this you know, we're not trying to make no fast compost or anything. We're just letting it sit. I occasionally stir it on whenever I think about it. And uh, we just kind of let it do its thing. And hopefully by next spring, it's ready to rock and roll. And we'll be using that in some of the gardens. And I'm planning on actually putting, out it, putting it out on a couple of the poor spots in the pasture. Um, I'm actually going to do that here soon. Um, because I think it's fine to go ahead and spread on the pasture. And I've got some poor spots, and I'm going to go ahead and reseed all of the pastures. I'm just basically sling, sling some good grass seed out on the pastures and some clover seed. But anyways, I just thought I'd check on that while we were down here. All right, guys. I also got to get breakfast made for the week. Usually on the weekends, I try to make a week, week's worth of breakfast. We're not bacon and eggs kind of people every single morning um i typically don't usually eat breakfast if i do it's very little um but andy and the kids i try to make them enough that'll last us at least most of the week sometimes not the whole week but most of the week um today i'm going to show you about a lot of people ask me about these jam bars that i make so i'm going to go ahead and tell you i ain't going to take credit for them um please check out venison for dinner check out her website um she's on instagram and YouTube. I have followed her for several years and this is her recipe. I'm just gonna show y'all how I do it. I'm gonna link the recipe in the description and in the comments to her website. <coughs> the rest of the, what I do for our family is I actually cut her recipe in half. So what you'll see me doing is half of uh, what her recipe calls for. So anyways, I just use what I've already got open. I already had some of this in the fridge, that strawberry jam. And Andy wanted to try some of the peach preserves on it too. So I'll be doing like a half and half. Um, this is great during jam making season because I don't know about y'all, but I always have like a half a jar left, like that I stick in the refrigerator and they just kind of add up the little half jars. So I like to use those to make these. 
So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Mine's working on warming up. And you're gonna need around two cups of all-purpose flour. That should be close enough. And we're also gonna add a cup of quick oats. One and a fourth a cup of sugar. And a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Gotta get all this mixed up. And while you're uh, getting all this together, go ahead and melt you about a cup of butter. What, baby? Why are you trying to clean my room? When I get this in the oven. We're gonna mix in this melted butter. Hello. And it's gonna be pretty crumbly. Uh -huh. okay. That's what you want it to do. Oh Lord, in the creek. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've got my grease nine by 13 pan here. And this is gonna kind of change colors a little bit. It's gonna go from white to kind of looking like that. And we're gonna do around three fourths of a cup to a cup on the bottom here. We're gonna make like a crust. So I'm gonna We're just gonna kind of go across here. It's very forgiving. Like sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less. So I'm just filling in the areas now where it looks a little thin for my crust. And I've got this grease. You can also uh, do this on parchment paper. I don't have any parchment paper right now, so <laughs> I've done it both ways. This way works too. All right, so you just kind of mash that down. That's your crust. And this is my peach preserves are kind of runny. They're not as thick as my strawberries, so they'll be kind of easy to do. I'm just going to kind of pour that across there. Do it about half of it. And I'll do strawberry on the other half. So then I just spread that the best that I can. And we're gonna take the rest of our mixture and just go over the top of it. All right, that's gonna go in the oven for about 45 minutes. Now I'll show y'all what it looks like. Thank you, dear. Huh. Thing I'm gonna do while I'm down here at the creek is pick some more of my serendipity corn. Um, we've actually done picked probably two, three dozen ears off of this serendipity. And I'll tell you what, guys, we really like it. Um, it's good. I, I put it up there with the Honey Select. Um, y'all know we're big fans of the Honey Select and uh this this goes right up there with it but anybody who's ever grew serendipity is it normal for the ears to be this small i mean that's a pretty small ear of corn so i didn't i didn't know if that was normal or if uh for some reason or another this land down here i mean you know this corn was just lacking in something but we've got a lot of them ready and the coons hadn't got in them yet thank goodness but we'll get me a couple more ears of this picked and that way we can have it for supper. We've been having corn for supper every night for the past three or four nights now. So I think it was because of some of the hot dry weather we had, but the corn didn't fill out plumb to the end on this batch of corn still good just had to break the end off of it and i did get 
quite a few more worms in this corn than I did my first corn. See, right there is what I'm talking about. And like I said, you know, this is a late season corn, so. And we had a pretty hot dry spell right around the time corn should have been getting rain. I don't think we're gonna try to freeze any of this corn cause we've already got our freezer full. And uh, so we're just pretty much eating on this corn and giving a little bit of it away here and there. We don't have a ton of it though. I mean, it's not, it's not bad looking. Dirt is short. There we go. Those will go good with supper tonight. There you go, guys. So we're gonna let that cool completely and I'll cut it into squares, put it in an airtight container and stick it in the fridge for breakfast this week. This how you wrote them. Alright. And then you got smashed down a little bit. Then you turn that. And then smash it a little bit. Then down there. And then look. It's perfect. And that's how you gauge them off. This. Where is it? Got the end's gotta be there somewhere. There. And this is the one where you get off. You gotta keep it on here so it won't stick. Good job. Um, we can't cut a whole lot. Dad, Dad wanted to do one, but he just went back outside. <laughs> he missed his opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, and we done did the last two. See, look at that empty plate. That's the imperfect one. Look at this perfect big one. That is a good one. It's burrito night, ain't it? Yep. It's we're having burrito chicken. <laughs> All right, so my jam bars have completely cooled off. So now I've got them cut in tiny little squares here. And I'm just gonna get them out. I'm gonna show you what the bottom looks like. And I just put them in here. And then they'll go in the refrigerator. And they'll enjoy them for breakfast. But you can see the crumble on top is supposed to still be crumbly like that. That's what it's supposed to look like. And this turns into a crust. So. They're very good. And the gel. The jam. Like turns into almost. I don't know. It changes the texture when you cook it. It's almost like the texture of the stuff in the Nutri-Grain bars, ain't it? Yes. It's kind of. Like a gummy. Yeah, like a. I don't want to say gooey. But it is, yeah. that's what it is, though. <laughs> But you can see I ain't having too much trouble with it sticking with no parchment paper. What, baby? Can you put it up? Back in ponytail. That fell. Oh, it fell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think your rainbow's about gone. I know. All you got left is a blue tip of your nose. Mm -hmm. Now what are y'all going to do? Put Hansen down the tractors. Well, that sounds fun. Okay. But you can tell, the only place they may stick a little band is where the jam ran over to the sides. Ain't nothing a little soaking can't take care of. Make a good quick breakfast, though. Yep. Didn't take me long at all to make them, and now there's breakfast for all, a homemade breakfast for all week. So we come out to the garden. Um, the turkeys are gone. Watch that video if you hadn't already. But 
We're just picking some of the tomatoes. I've done all I can do with tomatoes, y'all. I know I've had people say, well, you still need to put up everything you get. When I tell y'all I don't have room for any more tomato products, I ain't kidding. <laughs> uh, and I'll be showing y'all, you know, some of that maybe towards the end of, closer to the end of the season. But anyways, we're going to take some of this to the chickens and just give them something to munch on so they don't go to waste. That sounds like thunder, don't it? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The sky is dark. Well, I didn't think it was supposed to rain anymore, but you know how that goes. Yeah, I wasn't full with this. Good Lord, it took a mate or something there. These sure are pretty. I wish I wish I should I should have waited on them to do my spaghetti sauce, but I should have done. For these? Mm -hmm. Well all these got sunburnt too, look at that. Yeah. Every one of them got sunburnt. Well these didn't. But it's been hot. You hear me? Yeah. Well those right there sure did. There's a weak plant. Maybe. Yeah. But this bucket's already full, that's gonna be heavy too. Come take over. Yeah. That's all we're gonna get in there. There you go. Chickens are gonna like that. Yeah, they are. Break it in half. It busted. There you go. Let's hit over the rock. There's nothing for you in there. You gonna ride her? Yeah. Jump on her back. You gonna let me ride you? I used to have a cow I rode when I was little. Well, jump on her. I can't get up her. <laughs> she might. Reggie, she'll stand there. I don't wanna try. <laughs> I'm just, I, don't, I don't feel that spunky this evening. I'm just kidding. She's slick, ain't she? Yeah. To be a bottle calf, she's really turned into a pretty cow. What are you doing? I bet you won't let me rub on you like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Poor Candy. Well, guys, I guess we're going to end today's video. That's about all we got. I think we're going to go in and relax for a little bit. What do you think? Maybe. <laughs> we'll uh, probably find something to do between here and the house. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys, we hope you enjoyed uh, the video, spend the evening with us, and uh, let me know in the comments if you tried the jam bars. I'd be interested to hear if you like them or not. We love them. And anyways, we'll see you on the next one. Y'all have a good one.